to the Dancing Bear Enlightenment Academy Holistic Transformation Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Beverly, and today we have uh, Melissa Johnston as our guest. She is an intuitive visionary healer. She is the intuitive for people who want to clear their subconscious blocks so that they can experience more love, joy, and abundance with ease. Drawing from her deep connection to cosmic intelligence, she blends her specialty of uncovering the blocks and patterns that keep you from living your most abundant life, doing the things you truly love. Today, she will talk to us about clearing our core wounds by using the Akashic Records. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you, Dr. Beverly. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, we're happy to have you. And what an interesting bio you have. So tell us your transformational story and how you got started. Sure. Um, So I had a very rapid spiritual awakening uh, back in 2018. Um, I was working um, what appeared to be sort of a successful life on the outside, you know, had the perfect corporate law firm job, was working my way up the ladder, had what appeared to be, you know, perfect family life, happy marriage. Um, I was doing everything that was expected of me. And at the same time, I felt this sort of existential void that um, no matter what I did, you know, um, it just, it grew louder and louder and I couldn't put a stop to it. I felt deeply unfulfilled, even though everything looked correct and right according to society. And um, I had everything I needed to sort of be happy, but I wasn't. Um, And so in 2018, um, I had this sort of breakthrough moment where I realized that I was living somebody else's life. It was sort of like a two-way thing where I saw that this was the path laid out um, before me by, you know, I I was raised by a a very high achieving and very powerful and strong, um, wonderful woman who was a single mom, who was also a high performance executive. And I realized that a lot of um, the things that I was living up to was sort of following in her footsteps rather than actually figuring out what was true for me and what I actually even wanted to do. And so um, during this awakening, I had this huge realization that in order to actually find fulfillment and to find happiness that I actually had to strip away and leave behind those things that were no longer serving me and um, I got down on my hands and knees uh, for the first time ever and I was just in like a prayer moment um, of okay if there's anything that I need to change like let's just let it burn you know let's shed the layers and um, the universe listened very fast and within six months I had left behind my high paying corporate career Um, I had left behind my family home, my marriage had come to an end, all of these things, it was like a instant, just um, like a tower moment. And um, what happened was a series of events kind of led me onto this quest to rediscover who I even was, what I even wanted, and what I even knew to be true for myself when I wasn't living life according to other people's standards and according to, you know, sort of the right or right thing to do. Um, And you know, the universe always has its way of kind of mirroring back to us what we need to either learn, work through, or what we need to let go of. Um, So I realized that over the the next um, course of two years, especially during the pandemic, as that happened pretty close around the corner, um, that there was a number of karmic cycles, karmic loops, and other sort of timelines that were running that had to be closed down in order for me to actually get clarity on my unique purpose, my mark that I wanted to leave. And the best way I can describe it to people that uh, I work with is that when you have a computer running and there's you know, a bunch of different browser tabs open, I'm sure we've all been guilty of this before. We have YouTube and Spotify and email and you know, Buzzfeed and the news open and our computer is bogged down, it runs heavy. Um, it kind of makes a loud you know, spinning noise but it's really hard to click on and load stuff to move forward. And it's the same when we have all of these old timelines and trajectories, old ways of being that are still concurrently running. Um, In order for us to actually understand who we are, in order to move forward, we can't also have the timelines running where we've taken on maybe another person's story, uh, where we're prone to say conditioning from our parents or those people that we've grown up around. Um, And nor can we also have those sort of core wounds or those places where we limit ourselves and we don't actually operate true to our our innate nature and our unique soul lessons running. 
Um, so it, through this work, I decided to dive all in, in all of the healing modalities, um, everything from Reiki to getting my coaching certification to access consciousness. And I found a lot of great stuff. Um, I also ventured into human design, which I still practice today and teach. Um, but through this work, I also started to notice that a lot of us, as we go into these spiritual quests and we go through this sort of journey of self-discoveries that we then end up taking on stuff that we think a spiritual person needs to do and behave like and be like, and we're still not quite always operating true to our unique purpose and our unique place in the world. Um, so, sorry, my dog's just very adamant on participating today. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, so through this work, um, I've learned to basically um, find ways to close timelines down, as well as the emotional investment that we have in these old stories that are no longer serving us. And that's when uh, I discovered the Akashic Records. And for those people who aren't familiar with the Akashic Records, basically, um, it is a fifth dimensional sort of library that houses and contains everything that we've ever deemed to be significant or important. So our subconscious mind, usually when we have a thought, a belief, or a story coupled with an emotional charge, um, kind of registers as, okay, this is something important to hold on to. So this can be traced back to even our ancestors when we saw, you know, our uncle foraging mushrooms, and then some of the mushrooms turned out to be not so healthy. And anything that we've registered as like a red flag, or even with a positive emotional charge, our subconscious holds on to for later. And so the Akashic Records is basically this powerhouse of everything that we have experienced, thought, believed, even intentions that we've had, as well as certain timelines, actions we've take, taken, words we've spoken um, from past, present, and future. So from all of our human incarnations across all lifetimes, including the ones that are sort of running out in the parallel, either directly in front of us or yet to come. And um, in this, we can also access where we have certain core wounds, subconscious blocks, and things that prevent us from living um, the life that we're truly bet out, meant to set out for others, as well as for truly understanding you know, our unique place in the world, which I think a lot of light workers, star seeds, and empaths really struggle with. Um, so with the Akashic Records, um, I have learned to be able to go back in time to what we call like a point of origin, or the sort of first time a, a problem started uh, at the root cause. And so instead of slapping sort of a bandit on it, just running the Reiki, or um, even doing like the immediate things like the emotional freedom and certain things that we do, we actually are able to kind of go back in time to where something started and to close down that entire timeline so that people can actually have relief from those issues or those blocks for good. Um, and through this work, I've been able to ra radically transform my life. I have a deep understanding of who I am. Even as somebody who is very sensitive and is very empathetic, I understand self versus not self. Um, I'm able to see how this has directly had an impact on my level of reciprocity and the amount of, I, I want to say like rewards or abundance that the universe is able to bring back to me through this work. Rather than being on a path of, you know, doing everything that's expected of you, there is this deep joy, this satisfaction, and this fulfillment that is arousing. Um, so that's where I've stepped into work with helping others. And I work with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis to understand sort of their soul blueprint and what they have written in for this lifetime and help them to clear out and close out anything that I, a, is not serving them or anything that is holding them back or even times where they don't know what the thing is that's hurting them. Um, but we can intuitively track that together and kind of come up with a, I don't want to say diagnosis because it's not um, a substitute for any medical you know, advice, but it's more of a, uh, a track record of, you know, here are your choices, here's what's holding you back, and here's how we can liberate you to move forward with a lot more ease. Yeah, about 80% of all issues are emotional anyway, so... If you if you I, that's why I always say as above so below because if you start at the top and you start healing yourself spiritually then mentally then emotionally it takes care of the physical absolutely absolutely sometimes and also, the physical is so bad you need to do things at the physical level and work up as well but it, if you start at the top like you're saying go to the akashic records figure out what your mindset is and deal with the emotions then you're going to ripple down and heal any physical conditions that are manifesting as a result of those those thought forms. 
Yeah, and any imbalances can really be traced back. So I think in you know modern healthcare, modern medicine, we are taught that physical issues present sort of an underlying physical cause, and they don't correlate with anything being there aside from just these physical things or this imbalance. And when we actually look at it, you know, the spiritual, the mental, the emotional, the etheric, these all contribute to sort of the unseen or invisible causes of disconnection, disease, disharmony, dysfunction that happen way before any of the physical even starts. And usually when our body gets to the point of having a physical, whether it's a symptom, ache, pain, wound, um, or manifestation, that's usually our body's cry for help, mm -hmm. you know, when it could have been addressed way before then. Yeah. Yeah. I'm an acupuncturist and that's our philosophy. We look at the whole person, including the spirit and the mind and the emotion, not yeah. just the yeah. physical. Yeah. Uh, I, I answer a lot. There's a, a website where people can go and ask questions. Can acupuncture do this? Can it do that? And I'm always answering questions. And the way people ask the question, they're so embroiled into the Western paradigm of treating the symptom, which is what Western medicine does, that doesn't heal you. Yeah. I have a leg, the question today was, will acupuncture help with leg pain? Well, sure, I can make any pain go away. I can make your toothache go away. Is that a good thing to do? No, you need to go see the dentist. Uh... You know? But why do you have the toothache? <laughs> What's <laughs> causing it? That's what I can fix. Um, and and we see things coming. I can tell you you're going to get sick before you get sick and what's wrong and how to fix it. So you never get sick. It's just another way of doing what you do, only it's from another, uh, it's just another philosophy. And uh, probably the way you do it might be a little quicker. <laughs> oh. I have to spend time with people and get it out of what's going on. And sometimes I just have to intuitive go in and say, this is what's going on. And they go, how do you know that? That's amazing that you're able to do that. And what a gift. Like I've seen, you know, acupuncturists as well. And they are extremely talented, but I couldn't even imagine, you know, going to an acupuncturist who also has like the intuitive capacities to be like, All right, like, let's, you know, tune into this. That would be wonderful. Yeah. Well, the first thing I do is, is the person in their body. And half the time, you know, there is what are you doing up there? Come back to your body. Because <laughs> you can't heal when you're not in your body. Um, so, yeah. So uh, one of the things that you were saying earlier is that people get stuck on a never ending healing loop. What is that about? Well, so I think, um, you know, also often we, we again, tend to try to search for the immediate relief, the thing that's going to cause us um, to feel better in the moment, but that um, provides maybe like a temporary, not necessarily like a temporary high, temporary state of relief, um, rather than like the lasting change, right? And a lot of the times we do need to make those, and it doesn't have to be a big change, but the micro adjustments that are actually going to allow us to embody this transformation without reverting back to our old patterns or habits when life gets a little hard, a little bit busy, a little stressful. Um, I, I see a no number of modalities practice where we don't actually examine the root cause or where this first was laid down in their Akashic records in their, in their lifetime to actually go back in time to kind of reverse or to even reconcile, you know, the underlying story that needs to come to the surface. So if I were to come to you and I'd be like, hey, you know, I've got headaches. A lot of the times people would run the Reiki on my head, but they wouldn't actually look at like how my body's performing overall, as well as like what underlying beliefs or stories I have running around myself, my self-worth, the way I show up in the world, if I'm good enough, if, you know, I've got an imposter syndrome running, and so those are sort of like those invisible forces, which aren't as exciting in the moment, but they, those can actually support people in embodying that lasting change immediately without the setbacks of, um, I like to call them the bungee cords of our past. And that's usually when we have like energetic cords to people, to situations that end up kind of pulling us right back into the same old chaos. Yeah, especially in families or very old friends where they're used to us being a certain way mm -hmm. and uh, I know for myself in my own healing journey I've had to disrupt those in a way that changed the dynamics so that now we can be together in a positive way instead of going back to the old oh so and so did this again yeah I had well, to do that with parents and with siblings with my daughter <laughs> I think our family is the one we needed to do it the most with 
<laughs> it's interesting too, because that it creates a level of safety when everyone is used to you showing up as with a certain maybe archetype, maybe you're the black sheep, maybe you're the rebel, maybe you are the, you know, whatever it is, the protagonist, um, when they start to see you shift and show up differently, that also affects them and how they show up, right? So oh. a lot of times people can, of course, be resistant to change. But I think the biggest thing people need to know is that, you know, no matter what your family is choosing, whether they're choosing to work on themselves, heal, you know, self-awaken or not, that doesn't need to hold you back from choosing your path, you know? Yeah. Um, well, I found that as I healed myself, they healed. Yeah. They went absolutely. on their own healing journey just because I changed and the way I interacted with them changed. And then all of a sudden they started changing. It changed the whole family dynamic. It's pretty awesome. I've had those experiences too. And it's mind boggling to to think back on, you know, the way things quote unquote were and how much people have like consciously evolved, even just by you maybe setting the example or by you doing your own um, inner work. Inner work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so um, how does the, the Akashic records change what we know about healing? I think the biggest thing that people that I would love to share with people is that we have so many choices at bay and each it's kind of like a, I'm sure you've seen these commercials too, where you have like a two, two way screen and on one side, one choice leads to one thing. The next choice leads to the next thing. So in other words, if I wake up, I can choose the apple or the oatmeal for breakfast. I can choose the stairs or the escalator. And this isn't about, um, you know, only choosing what is quote unquote right, but it's sort of seeing the ripple effect of how small everyday choices can lead to something far greater in the future. Mm -hmm. And being able to understand that with the Akashic Records, we can not only look back in time to sort of where we started mm -hmm. certain behavior, whether it's people pleasing, whether it is self-abandoning ourselves to put other people first, whether it is taking on other people's problems and energies as if it was our own to understand them, to be with them. We can look at where we first made that small micro decision to maybe, you know, change a way of us in order to appease someone or to be like them or with them and how that then kind of, it's, it's almost like it accrues interest, right? So it grows and it's like this giant snowball effect and avalanche and then when we see it 30 years later, it's like, oh, this shows up in my work, this shows up in my marriage, this shows up with my children when they get up unhappy with me, I revert back to old ways, right? So it's not only just with healing backwards in time, but it's also for sort of installing new micro changes and adjustments that feel, one, realistic, they feel reasonable and achievable, but you can also kind of see you know, if I make this choice and if I step into the unknown just a little bit, here's actually how much expansion and um, forward looking surprises that I can, you know, kind of create for myself just by changing timelines. So by accepting change in smaller steps, it's easier to make those bigger changes by just doing one little step at a time. Is that awesome. what you're saying? Yeah, I'm, I'm the self proclaimed uh, queen of, you know, going all in in a change when I was fed up with my ways of being. I was like, I'm going to exercise and I'm going to do this keto diet and I'm going to add all of the things. Right. And so I would go and over invest in something because I was fed up of where I was at when realistically it was just the soul yearning to change my life from the inside out. And I thought I had to change all of these aspects of myself in order to get that when realistically that in the short term burnt myself out pretty bad. And then I also got discouraged because I didn't believe in myself to see things through when realistically I was biting off way more than I could chew. And it just wasn't, um, it wasn't sustainable with, again, being a mom, being at a busy life, you know? Yeah, I tend to go for broke. Um, <laughs> if you're going to make the change, yeah. I just look ahead and I say, okay, these are all the steps. I'm going to do them all now. Yeah, <laughs> And I just go for it. And then, then I end up with a healing crisis and right. I go for that. And then, and then everything's okay. Um, yeah. But for, for a lot of people, I'm a five life path. We're about change. Um, if you're not a five life path, the way I make those kind of changes are going to be really hard for most people. I think the step-by-step -step incremental uh, changes is a little bit easier on people. For um, sure. I, I definitely believe that. And I also know that a little bit of the narrative shift you know, is really important too. And I used to very much be this kind of person that was like, 
once I've accomplished this thing, once I've hit this goal, once I've changed this thing about my life, once I have this manifestation or this outcome, mm -hmm. then I will be happy. Right. So I was mm -hmm. running like on this hamster wheel, trying to change all of the mm -hmm. things, waiting for this reward. And it's the same thing that, um, and this is not to bash mm -hmm. any religious pantheons of belief, but it's the same sort of belief system of if, what, if I sacrifice all of these things in my life, then one day I can get to heaven rather than allowing us to actually enjoy the ride, enjoy the journey and make it really fun and sustainable so that we're getting micro rewards along the way. And so that it can actually be a here in the now experience rather than a far out in the future. And until then I'll be miserable. Yeah, no, I see it as a process, not a destination. Absolutely. Yeah. And the process, you know, there's a wheel, it kind of goes around and sometimes it's going up and sometimes it's going down and it's never down forever. It's never up forever. It's yeah. just, okay, that happened. Oh, look at, <laughs> oh, that happened. Oh, good. Oh, that happened. You know, that's how I look at it. And I've just learned to laugh my way through the low parts. <laughs> I love that. I love that detachment too. You know, it's not all that serious at the end of the day. Well, you create heaven on earth is my belief. You can you can create heaven or you can create hell. And when I was young, I created hell. And one day I just looked up and said, I'm tired of this. I don't want any more of that. And then it ended. I didn't create hell anymore. Oh, thanks. I love that. I just decided that was it. I'm done. I'm going to enjoy life from now on. And it's up to you. Like, what was it? Jerry, Jerry Maguire was at the movie where... He said, you complete me and or or you'll see in movies where they say, I want to make you happy. You know, if someone said that to me, it's like, oh, OK, get away. Well, because happiness is from the inside, not from yeah. the outside. Let's compliment each other as we walk side by side. <laughs> there you go. That's that's the best kind of relationship. Um, so how do people limit their growth and their expansion? What are those barriers that prevent them from taking those uh, incremental steps? Yeah, I would say, um, well, some of the top three would be for sure resisting the unknown. So sometimes we have this way of, even though this thing is no longer serving me, it's actually causing me some hardships and it's really uncomfortable, but this is all I've ever known, you know, resisting sort of a new way of being or a new way of showing up. Can limit that and um, one of the modalities I use is actually sort of like a belief repatterning so anywhere we have sort of a secondary gain or a value that we're getting out of an old behavior we can look at clearing those associations where we mm -hmm. actually have our neural grooves that associate this old thing that is really not serving us with safety comfort whatever benefit it is um, another thing that we need to look out for is sort of like an upper limit or glass ceiling so sometimes when life gets a little bit too good, a little bit too expansive, our subconscious tends to pull us back down into that safety net because we haven't been used to that much peace, that much tranquility, maybe that much fun, maybe that much abundance, financial mm -hmm. prosperity, you know, whatever the thing is for you. Sometimes when we feel like there are no longer these problems that we're used to experiencing, we can on a subconscious level, if we're not careful, recreate problems just to keep ourselves sort of busy in problem solving mode when, you know, it's not, it's not necessary by any means. So that's like people that win the lottery and five years later, they're broke. Yeah. And they can't hold it. And I would actually be really surprised to see if somebody who won the lottery actually got into one of these quantum healing sessions for us to energetically raise their, what we call like an energetic bare minimum. So this is the bare minimum amount that we can hold and the upper limit, which is all sort of programmed on an energetic level of how much we'll allow. And if we were to actually expand that and clear maybe some of the soul contracts to poverty, to taking one step forward and then two steps back, if they might actually be able to hold those. But so far, I haven't seen it done yet. So that's definitely one of those experiments I would love to. <laughs> if anyone happens to win the lottery, hit me up. I'll give you a free session so you can hold it. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've heard where people recreate what they're used to. Yeah, because it's remote. Money instead of investing it so they have a steady stream of money coming in, they spend it. And people who are wealthy don't spend it, they invest it. And that's, that's nice. one of, it's the poverty mentality. That's that rich dad, poor dad, what's his name? I forgot his name. Kiyosaki, I think it is. Kiyosaki, yeah. And and he said the 
the rich dad would say, invest the money and live off of what you're getting in, in the investment and the poor dad spends it. And um, that's why you stay poor because you spend it. <laughs> yeah. And not only that, I think a lot of people are not always aware of some of the ancestral ties or vows that they have taken mm -hmm. on where we are. And I've done this actually, I recently put on a workshop with people where I was facilitating like an abundance blocks clearing session and a lot of people were so shocked to see the amount of stories they had around money and their earliest paradigms around money, uh, which wasn't even theirs. It was something that they witnessed at age two at the dinner table, something that they saw their parents going through when the the uh, the last housing bubble broke. And they, you know, took that belief on as sort of absolute fact rather than seeing it as, you know, as a separation of I can create my own reality. I'm not here to necessarily recreate what my parents went through. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Um, you talk about, um, <clears throat> okay, I lost it. Here. Oh, cosmic intelligence. So tell us about cosmic intelligence. I think that there's, well, there's so many levels of cosmic intelligence, but really it is first and foremost, our internal guidance system. So this could be our intuition. This could be our body intelligence. This could be sort of the, uh, on a cellular level, our inner knowing, our sort of spidey senses. Um, there's always outside forces as well that can influence and sort of direct the guy uh, the, the flow of information. So this would be the thing from your guide team to the collective belief systems, the collective reality agreements that we've made. So if we are, say, abiding or living by, um, let's just say corporate culture, that would be a, a collective belief system that we're all sort of playing one character out in. Um, there's obviously the unified field where anything's possible, where we can co-create our reality with our intentions, with our emotions, with our, you know, our vibration. Um, but cosmic intelligence is everything from like your guides to source energy to the elements that surround us, spirit animals, ancestors beyond the veil. It's it's literally everything in our existence is sort of a GPS or a compass if we know how to not only attune with it, but also to work with it rather than against it. If we are so used to being in our logical, you know, determined, hardworking head versus in the flow of how life wants to work and shape with us rather than against us. Yeah, I try to stay connected to my soul, my higher self. Is this my path? No. Okay. Because you can... Well, I, I do a lot of shamanic work, so I've known for a long time, you can look into the past and into the future, and you can see, okay, if I do this, what's my future? If I do this, what's my future? And you can actually see that with your third eye if you practice it, and 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 that's kind of how I keep myself in alignment. Okay, I don't want to do that. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so I assume that's what you're talking about, is keeping the, all of those levels of intelligence aligned. Yeah, exactly. And knowing how to access them. So everything from the trees around us to even our homes, you know, they, um, this is also funny, even our bank accounts, and people don't often know that we can energetically kind of talk to our bank accounts as, as funny as the sounds, everything has consciousness, right? So, mm -hmm. and this doesn't mean that you are like a gifted medium or psychic. I think everyone has intuitive capacities mm -hmm. that they can tap into if they know the right questions to ask. Um, so a lot of it is really trial and error and just becoming a really good question asker. Oh, yeah. I talk to everything. I talk to my car. I thank it for being in the garage and, and always <laughs> working whenever I need it. And yeah, I, I talk to everything. Um, mm -hmm. I've had appliances last for years after their expiry date because uh, well, one thing I do send them energy. This is one thing I, I think Reiki is good for. I rarely use Reiki, especially on people. Cats like Reiki. I'll put Reiki into the the organic parts of an appliance or the organic parts of my car. They really like the Reiki. I love and that. They will last longer when you do that. <laughs> but you oh. can ask them, what do you need? And they'll tell you. In my, we have like a, a Facebook group for um, some of us that have like apprenticed under this specific modality. And one of the people was also sharing the Reiki on the car. And she was showing how her like average gas mileage is like through the roof compared to what the, the standard is for that model. And she's like, it's, it's, you know, there's no other way to explain this. Yeah. Rubber and oil and gas, they all like Reiki. Yeah. 
good use of Reiki. <laughs> I do that with my credit cards, my my debit card, all of those things. I haven't done that with that. That's a good idea. Do that to my bank account. I'm going to try that and see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good little reconciliation to do at the uh, the end of each month to just set like a new level of expansion and also to just be aware of any, you know, unwanted stories that we might have projected around. Is there enough or I need to make a trade off or anything like that that needs to just come out of there to create the most growth. I have a friend who has been homeless since 2008. She's a doctor friend. We sat next to each other in medical school. <laughs> And and she she for some reason is always homeless and always changing. She has has more jobs in a year than I've had in my whole life. And um and the purpose of that story was what did you say? Just what I just lost track of what I was gonna say. I think it had to do around like reconciling the stories we place on our bank accounts or trade-offs we're making. Well, I don't know, I just lost it. Oh, okay. <laughs> maybe I'll think of it later. I can't believe I lost that story. I guess I went too far back into the past and got stuck back there. Because um, <laughs> that was a, a major transition for both of us. Um, oh, I remember what I was going to say. So for a while, she was in Europe. And she would travel around staying at Pensiones. And she would stay for free in exchange for cleaning. So she would clean and she would get room and board. And then she had computer work that she would do online where she would make some money. And she traveled all over Europe. And what I learned watching her was that everything she needed, she got the moment she needed it. That's crazy. And I realized it doesn't matter how much you have. It only matters, do you have food right now when you're hungry? Do you have shelter right now when you need shelter? Do you have transportation when you need it? Maybe a car, maybe a bicycle, maybe a Uber. You know, do you have what you need in the moment to live and be happy? Mm -hmm. And understanding that at a really deep level helped change my attitude about a lot of things mm -hmm. and, and broke a lot of paradigms of, well, you have to have this and you have to have this house. And, you know, because um, I had a big house and I sold it and I downsized into a little teeny house now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's easier to take care of. I don't have to have a gardener. <laughs> My life is much simpler. Um, and so letting go of those things, do you have enough? Mm -hmm. uh, knowing that everything you need, you will get in the moment. Yeah, it sometimes requires that trust goal for sure. And it's like... Um, well, what is the saying? It's like when you leap, the net will appear kind of thing. Yeah, right. Exactly. And uh, someone once said to me, um, if you were supposed to be homeless, you'd be homeless now. And since you're not, you probably never will be. Mm -hmm. Because people who want to create that paradigm will create it. People who don't want to create that paradigm won't create it. And so if you've created a paradigm you don't want, you need someone like Melissa here to pull you out of that paradigm because it isn't necessary. You've created that for yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's there's that really important piece of, you know, sometimes we don't have to keep continue going through the unnecessary suffering just to learn quote unquote lessons. Like life mm -hmm. is supposed to be a little bit juicy as well and a little bit fun. And it's not all meant to be hardships and growth lessons. That's not to say that we're going to bypass the work by any means. That's just taking us out of that unnecessary, especially in the spiritual communities, that unnecessary martyrdom of I'm just here to do this inner work constantly without actually getting to the point of flourishing and coming to a thrive state where we're no longer operating in the survival mode. We're actually in that thrive state, whatever that looks like for us individually. That's a good point. Yeah, I think a lot of people are in a thrive state today after 2020 with all the shutdowns and um, and the fear. And luckily now I see people are starting to wake up, come out of it. Um, <clears throat> but there's still some people I know that are still stuck in the old old stuff. And I, I actually don't know how to help people that are, they've got such blinder, they're like a horse with blinders on and they can't see, you know, it's blocked they can't see mm -hmm. and um 
breaking those heavy paradigms for people that are still stuck in that old way of thinking. I, I, that's not what I do. <laughs> Obviously it's what you do. <laughs> so sort of, I, I think that actually the, the people that I most love to work with are the ones that are willing to take a leap and that are willing to, mm -hmm. you know, look at their ish, get through it, get onto the next thing so that they can start to, it's almost like surfing a tidal wave, you know, like that's more of my ideal client. I'm, I'm not sure if the people with the very heavy blinders, you know, sometimes it takes that own inner timing for them to come to their own realizations, even if they need outside help to hire someone or to ask a friend or a mentor. Um, but sometimes it requires that sort of inner, I need to change things rather than us, you know, um, coming in to be like their, their savior. Yeah, that's the, the, my ideal patient is the one that says I'm willing to change. Okay. If, they're, if they want, you know, a lot of people, they go to the doctor and they get a pill and yeah. they think that's healing. It's not healing. You're sick because of your thoughts, your emotions, what you put in your mouth and what you do during the day. And if you're not willing to change what you do, change what you eat, change, deal with your feelings. You can't change it, but you've got to deal with it. You've got to go through them and look at how you're thinking. You're not going to heal. Yeah. So I don't like to waste my time with people like that. It's like, mm -hmm. are you ready for change? Then I can help you. If That's you're not ready to take responsibility completely for you and your life, I can't help you anyway. Exactly. No, you hit the nail on the head. And as people who are very, you know, I think as healers, we are so deeply caring and empathetic and compassionate that we want to see you thrive so bad. And unless you're willing to make those changes yourself and also kind of rise as we are there to support you and cheer you on and you know help you through the the blind spots of the fog it it makes our job so much easier when they're like yep let's go let's look at this let's you know yeah make well i i've had patients that you know like i had a diabetic and i said you've got to start eating vegetables and he he had his wife cooking vegetables and he said i spit them out i couldn't handle it at first, he told me at his age, he didn't he didn't need to change. And I said, well, look at how sick you are. You know, you, you want to just die or do you want to get well and, and enjoy the rest of your life? So he tries. He says, OK, I'll try. Well, that didn't work. So I gave him a green powder and he didn't like that. So I found Fido pills. They're literally green, but they're vegetables that have been compressed into a pill that I got into them. So I will work with people to find a solution to help you, but you have to be willing to try. And he was willing to try. Wonderful. That's amazing. Yeah. So I will help find a solution, but you have to take the step. You're the one that has to do the healing because I don't heal people. They heal themselves. Yeah. And all I can do is show you where the doors are and how to pick the lock, but you're going to have to open the door. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's been fun talking to you. So you have a free gift, right? Free clarity call. So tell us about your free clarity call. Yeah, so this is a um, sort of comprehensive energetic assessment. It's a very conversational piece. So if, you know, this message and um, a little bit of the transformational story resonated or you feel like you are in a place of I'm in a blind spot, I don't know how to move forward, I don't even know what I want or I don't even know what I need. Um, this is where we can look at uh, using a pendulum dowsing, as well as just some intuitive guidance where you might want to look at and make some recommendations on something that um, would be a lot, oops, something that would be highly beneficial to you at this moment in terms of your evolution in soul group. Um, and then from there, if it feels like a fit, um, there are some options to work together, but this is a no pressure clarity call. So either way, you will be left with a nugget of wisdom that's going to help you on your path next, whether it's a resource or a uh, meditation or something that I know that I can refer to. It's gonna help you understand where on your path you are and what um, might be really expansive for you moving forward. Wow, that's a very nice gift. So if you wanna get that gift and you're on YouTube, the link will be down below. But if you're listening uh, on the podcast, uh, the link is the typical HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash, then enter intuitive healing dot a s as dot m e me forward slash schedule dot php so it's intuitive healing dot as dot me 
forward slash schedule.php. Very nice. So do you have any closing words for our audience? I would say that's a really intro introspective question. Um, I would say just a reminder that some part of you inside knows the way and to trust it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we get so bogged down in our heads of thinking we have to have it all figured out or we compare ourselves to where we are versus maybe other people our age or in our vicinity. And just trusting that there is that inner being, that inner whatever it is, that guiding force within yourself that truly does have all the answers and to allow it to show you. And if you don't know what that looks like, I love working with open-ended questions. You can also ask something open-ended to get the universe to kind of mirror back to you what you need to do next. So um, a great way to access that or to start working with your inner being is universe, what would it take to receive external confirmation of my next right step within the next 24 hours or less? And just be aware of what might show up for you. Yeah, ask for a sign. I do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, so fun. There's so many synchronicities. I can't even like begin to go on a, <laughs> a rant about that. But thank you for having me. It was a really great conversation as well. It was great having you. And thank you all for joining us today. And remember to be the light you want to see in the world.